In this video, I am going to use Unreal Engine 5.3 to create a texture and material that looks exactly how the gold material should look. During the process, I'm going to explain you a couple of concepts that are really important. The first one are the parameters as the base color and the roughness. And we are also going to use the linear interpolation to create that amazing effect of texture that we need for the gold. Please don't forget to give a like, subscribe, and a comment to my channel. And remember that by joining Wooden.com, you will get access to coupons for all the courses that I am creating. And it's totally free. Let's get started. For these demos, I am going to use the library and the version 5.32 of Unreal. So let's launch this version. Select games, third person. And in my case, I also want to add the starter content. I will explain later why. And here, let's add a name like Material Tutorial. Once the scene is presented to us, I am going to first add a cube to the scene. Let me move it up and end to put it over the surface. Very good. And now for this one, we are going to add some materials. In content, because I like to keep order of everything, I will add a new folder that I will call material. In fact, let me rename it materials. Inside materials, I am going to material and material to add to create my first one. And I will start with M, indicating that it is a material. And let's call it first material. Double click to open it. Let me put the material here and let's start working with this. The first thing is that when you create a material by default, you will have this node, which is the resulting material, how this material is going to look at the end. Now, there are several, several uh, variables that you can set here. Let's start with the most basic, which is the base color. For, the, for every materials, you have always three components, which are, uh, are red, green, and blue. Keeping the three key on your, uh, on your keyboard and clicking with your mouse, you have here the three components for a specific material. You can also have a vector that instead of three components, have two components. Keeping the two key down and clicking, you have two components, and as you can imagine, if you keep the one key and click, you have just one component. If you set the value of just one component as a vector component and related to the base color, the base color that is going to be presented will be created having in consideration that all the three components of the color are going to have this value. So if you say, for example, instead of zero, you select one, then you're going to obtain the three components, like in the maximum value, which by the way is one, you can, you can put two, but the maximum value is one. And in this case, if you add the maximum value for the three components, you will have, well, a white. I can put it zero here, and then you have the black. Let's play with the second one. Let's say that I want to select this. In this case, you have two components. You have the red and you have the green. If you move the X, which is related to the red to one, well, what you're going to obtain is a full red color. If instead of doing that, you use the component on Y and put it in one, as you can imagine, it's going to be the Y. If you put both of them in one, then it's going to be the combination between these two colors, which is this kind of, uh, it's, it's a greenish, yellowish, greenish. Now, let's say that I want to use all three components. We put this one zero and zero. Then I'm going to connect with this one. Here, you're generating a vector of three components where every element for defining the color is independent. So if I put here one for the last one, it's going to be totally blue. And if you put one for all of them, then you're going to obtain the white. I think this, this is a very important starting point for you to understand how the base color is working. So it's working based on a vector of three components. Let me delete this one. I don't need it. And this one as well. 
So let's say that we have the color. As I wish to have a golden color, I make some research on the internet uh, to try to define what color that can be. You can click, double click here and select the color that you wish, any color. And as soon as you select it, of course, it's going to be uh, applied here in this material. Now, in the case of the gold that I want to add to my scene, I have a code that I wish to use, which is the DAA520, which is an hexagonal, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, which is an hexadecimal color. And I can click OK. And now I have uh, my base golden color that I will use. Let's apply, save the changes, and now go back to our object. In fact, I'm going to scale this up. Let me scale it a bit more, make it a lot bigger, and end to put it into the surface. And now I can apply, once I have the object selected, I can find the materials and move the materials over the object. As you can see at this moment, yeah, it's cool. It's uh, just a very simple material. We apply just a color, but we want to create more texture because every time that you see gold, gold has that kind of texture. It's, 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 it, it feels more realistic when we add an extra element of texture, of brightness, and we play with these values. When we want to talk about brightness, the variable of the material that we want to use or the parameter that we want to change is the related to roughness. Let me ex start explain, explaining this. As in the previous case, I'm going to click one and click to create just one parameter. And then I'm going to connect this one to the roughness. If the value of the roughness is equal to zero, as you can see here, it is a full reflection of this object. Let me change the object to a cube, for example. And here you can see that it's a full reflection. If you move this value to one, then there's not reflection at all. If you have this value in 0 0.5, it's half the reflection and half not. So if I can play with different sections of this object and creating reflections in some points and not reflections in others, then it's going to give this realistic appearance of, of this beautiful material. Now, how we're going to do that? Well, to do that, we're going to use something called the linear interpolation. You can find it as lerp. Let me right click and you can find like lerp and select linear interpolate or looking for linear interpolate. Another option is to keep the L key down and click and you have the linear interpolation. Let me connect this value to the roughness. The linear interpolation is a node that allows us to combine two different values and say in what point between these two different values we are going to be. So let's say that at this moment I have A is zero, B is one, the basic two limits for the roughness, and then I'm saying that the alpha is going to be 0.5. That means that what we're going to obtain here is a midpoint between these two. Now, let's say that I move this to zero. What will happen is that we have the full reflection object. It is the same as if we apply only the value of A. And as you can imagine, if we set the value in one, it will be like we are applying only the value of B. Now, let me put this back in 0 0.5. And I wish to create a couple of variables for one, for A and another variable for B. So I can handle the variables here outside. Now, I want to add a texture that will allow me to combine the values, the sections of A and B. What would that mean is that depending on the level of white or black, I will be going to one side or to another. For this, we're going to create something that is a texture sample. Now, let's talk about the texture sample. First, remember that we added the started content. And in the started content, we have textures. And in textures, we have a texture called Perlin Noise, T Perlin Noise. Double click this texture. 
So as you can see here, we have different tones for black and for white. This is exactly what I'm looking for. Let's remove all the corresponding masks for the different colors. If you remove them all, then you're going to obtain nothing, which is this white. But if you add one of them individually, one at a time, as you can see, is the same thing that if we added all of them. This is very interesting for us. And I wish to use this texture. So I will go back to my material. And in this case, what I want to do is to add this texture sample. So keeping the T key down and clicking, you have the texture sample. And as we have the purling noise at this moment by default selected, it's going to be added here. Now, if you have other texture or you don't find the texture, the pearly noise at this moment, you can click here and look for the particular uh, texture that you're looking, that you need it. Now, what I'm going to do is that using any of the channels R, G, or B, it doesn't matter, I can connect this channel to the alpha. And now what is creating here, and you can see it in, the, in this um, geometry, is that more realistic appearance of the gold that we are looking for to create. Let's apply this and go back. I'll apply and save, sorry, I want to save, and then go back to the object. And now you can see here, let me click F. Now you can see here that we are creating a solid block of gold with a texture that really looks like it is almost alive. And if you play your game, uh, let's uh, start exploring this game with, with our character. Look at how beautiful this is presenting to the player. This is how you create a material for gold that looks terrific for your game. Thank you for watching this video. Please don't forget to give a like, subscribe, and a comment to my channel. And don't forget to subscribe to Gulden.com so you can have access to coupons for all the courses I am creating. Thank you very much for being there. I'll see you very soon.